Mark Ripley is loading up an old-fashioned tutu with a ton of thermal kit so he can sort out a bloom of rabbits on the South Downs. I'm just going to shoot it just at an eye shine and unless you can ID it as a rabbit. Oh, there he is. In Bedfordshire, Wayne Martin gets together with Paul Childerly to hunt a hare with a catapult, and Paul goes mano a mano with a squirrel. Is this a squirrel or not a snake? <laughs> the, these things are lethal, though. Absolutely lethal. We're giving away a gun slip and a cartridge belt from Ian Hodge Field Sports, priced at more than £70. Ian himself makes an appearance. I'm in Liège, the home of Belgian gun making. No reason for that. David is on the new stump and Stuart Blair has hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. When it comes to shooting foxes at seemingly impossible distances, Mark Ripley is the master. He has the kit. He has the technique. Today he faces a different challenge. He's controlling rabbits on a couple of his permissions on the Sussex Downs, and the kit is different. For this job, he chooses an unusual combination of new and old, the latest high-tech Hick Micro Optics. He's got a Falcon Thermal Spotter and the Alpex Day-Night Scope mounted on an ancient CZ-22 rifle. Long gone are the days when we would be carting around a motorcycle battery in a lamp and stuff, and acid holes in the jackets and things like that. These sort of units now, I mean, that just looks like a normal day scope and it's just so efficient. There's no trading leads or anything. And we're using bits of kit like this, like thermal spot. I mean, this, this sort of uh, technology is a real game changer. Obviously, if you can't see something, you can't shoot it. And the, the trouble with lamps and things was if you had a, a fox, say, that was out in a, in a field in a tram line or whatever, and you scan that field with a lamp, then unless that fox looks straight at you and you've got the eye shine, very often you could easily miss that. But with a thermal unit, they just can't hide from that. So why does Mark stick with the 2 2 rimfire, a calibre that dates back more than 100 years and not the more modern 1.7 HMR? A lot of people now for rabbit control now are, are sort of going over to the 17 HMR, which as well is a brilliant calibre. But they've each got their pros and cons. So, um, but yeah, for me, I just, I just like the 2 2. I've had it for a long time and, and uh, yeah, just familiar with it. And I just like the fact that it's too quiet. So uh, you can quite often knock over one or two more rabbits with this, I feel, than what you would with a HMR in, in certain conditions. So that's really where the 2-2 the two, two shines using subsonic ammunition. That's what makes it so quiet. Uh, if you start going down the route of using high velocity ammunition, then you're going to get that, that supersonic crack from the rifle like the HMR. So then you, you pretty much, you might as well just go and use a HMR. <laughs> We're using 2-2 two, two, uh, Winchester X subsonic ammunition this evening, which this rifle and uh, it seems a lot of CZs seem to quite like that ammunition and yeah, it's proved pretty effective over the time I've had this rifle. We head to a gateway overlooking a field that's popular with rabbits. Mark hopes they will come out once it starts to get dark. It's a long cold wait. Eventually he spots one with the falcon. Even though it's almost dark, the Alpex still shows the green of the grass as bright as day. It's the first one down. There's a couple out, James. Two down, or three down. A few rabbits there, all nice, healthy looking rabbits. All headshot. Uh, furthest one, I think, was about 65, 70 yards, and the other two were about 50. Yeah, good start to the evening. Happy with that. We're going to head up to the golf course and just see if we can thin out a few rabbits up there. There's not masses up there, but you only need a few rabbits on there to, uh, to cause a bit of a problem. They will uh, dig up the greens and, um, yeah, they're, they're not welcome on there at all. So we've gone into 
night vision mode on the uh, on the Alpex there, and we've got the um, PBIR illuminator on there, and that's all looking good. At the moment, on this bit, I'm only seeing a couple of rabbits out, which <laughs> is a bit worrying, but I'm sure there'll be a few more out on some of the other greens, so we can go and have a, a little wander around and see what we can find. So we've got four or five fallow does just stood in front of us there about probably they're probably about 70 yards I'd say. There's a few, it looks like rabbits sort of in the in the trees now on the edge of the course, but I can only just see little bits of heat in amongst the uh, in amongst the cover, so it's uh, very difficult to tell exactly what you're looking at because it could be any living thing when it's uh, just a little bit of heat shining between the leaves. And it's almost certainly rabbits, but you can't just go shooting just at an eye shine and, unless you can ID it as a rabbit. healthy rabbit again headshot so didn't know much about that right let's see if we can find a couple more Right, so we've had a, a decent bag there of eight rabbits. We had three in daylight earlier, and we've just had the others up on the uh, golf course here, all using the uh, Alpex and the 2-2. Two -two. So it's been a, a nice combination, and we've managed to spot everything with the Falcon here. Again, another nice, very clear bit of kit. So yeah, um, it's made for a really nice setup, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, it's a, a good result because we didn't have all that many rabbits up here, or at least not that are out this early in the evening. So, yeah, we've uh, done all right there. To learn more about the scope and spotter that Mark is using, go to night vision expert Scott Country. Link below. And you can see more from Mark on his YouTube channel, 260 Rips. Thank you, Mr. Rips. Now, won't the winner of this week's prize draw look smart? Ian Hodge Field Sports has donated a cartridge belt and a gun slip by Jack Pike, priced at more than £70. Want to know how to enter? Watch the Field Sports Nation's own TV show, Field Sports Extra, which is out on Tuesdays. And you can do that by joining the Field Sports Nation for a fiver a month or by joining up your Field Sports buddy. The Christmas gift for the sportsman or woman who has everything. Link to that below. Now from Leather Accessories to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Leading scientists are warning that antis are misleading MPs with a hurricane of misinformation over trophy hunting. A private member's bill proposes a ban on the importing of hunting trophies. Now conservation experts are accusing the campaign to ban trophy hunting of feeding MPs clear misinformation about the impact of a ban. Amy Dickman, a professor of wildlife conservation at Oxford University, says that researchers analysed 118 statements made by MPs during a parliamentary debate last month and found that 85, more than 70%, were either false or misleading. She said they included erroneous claims that there were as few as 10,000 lions left in the wild and that British trophy hunters are among the world's most active killers of endangered animals. Meanwhile, chimp expert Jane Goodall has launched a blistering attack on hunting tourists. Holding a placard paying tribute to Cecil the lion, she labelled them mentally diseased or stupid at a Westminster reception for the trophy import ban private members bill. Rural organisations say the proposed licensing of grouse shooting must not jeopardise vital jobs. 
They are also concerned that important conservation work in some of the country's most fragile rural areas must be protected too. The Scottish Government has announced a public consultation on its forthcoming wildlife management bill. Field sports groups including Basque, Scotland's regional moorland groups and the Scottish Gamekeepers Association made a joint statement to say that the introduction of yet another layer of legislation, regulation and bureaucracy must not hamper what is a world-class rural business sector. The current proposals are unacceptable and that they are go beyond what was proposed initially and um, make that very clear and make it clear too that livelihoods depend on grouse shooting and grouse shooting is a very important part of the rural Scottish economy. Police have arrested three men on suspicion of hair poaching after a car crash. Lincolnshire police say the men drove off in a Subaru Forester which collided with a coach. They were arrested a short time later. The suspects from Doncaster and Nottingham have been released on bail. Officers seized a vehicle and three dogs which were taken to local kennels. Police also issued a 48-hour dispersal order, which means anyone suspected of hair poaching can be told to leave the county and face arrest if they return. An English council used a covert camera operation to catch a gang of flytippers. The footage captured by Wiltshire Council led to the conviction of the group. The five men were filmed leaving waste from their recent roofing job. They dumped and burned household waste such as felt, tarpaulin and white goods. The undercover operation took three months. The men were fined a total of £14,000 and their van was crushed as punishment for their actions. Wiltshire Council receives 200 reports of fly tipping every month. The Scottish Countryside Alliance says that rough shooting could become illegal because of a lack of clarity in proposed legislation. The Scottish Government is considering a bill that further restricts hunting with hounds. The SEA fears rough shooting will become a criminal offence because of the change in the use of dogs. Environment Minister Mari McCallan says that two dogs can still be used to flush quarry and that she's only asking shooters to make what she calls small adjustments. You'll only be able to shoot over two dogs and you have to make sure if there are more than two dogs in the beating line or on that shoot that they don't join together and form a pack. And it's not entirely clear what a pack is as well. Uh, the definition says more than two dogs but it doesn't exactly say in which area the two dogs have to be and how close, uh, how close they've, they've got to be to, to form a pack. A new African anti-poaching newsletter has been launched. It highlights the anti-poaching work that hunting safari operators carry out across the continent. Called Patrol, Anti-Poaching in Action, the free monthly email includes written articles and short documentaries. It covers subsistence and commercial poaching, meat, timber and horn, and the tactics to stop it. Sign up at patrolling.org. See the link below for more. The German Ministry of Agriculture has announced the end of the country's membership of the International Hunting Council, the CIC. The exit follows the CIC's criticism of the ministry's proposed crackdown on the importing of hunting trophies. In a letter, the ministry, which is run by a Green Party politician, says that the sustainable regulated hunting of protected species contradicts the basic political orientation of the federal government. A tiger that's believed to have killed a 10-year-old boy in India has been captured. The animal was found in sugarcane fields near the village where the child died. The death outraged villagers who held protests demanding action. The tiger was tracked so it could be tranquilized and trapped. A team of vets is examining the female tiger to decide its fate. And finally, rhinoceros populations in Zimbabwe are starting to rebound. The African Rhino Specialist Group of the International Union for Conservation of Nature Species Survival says the number of rhinos in the country has topped 1,000 animals for the first time in more than 30 years. This includes 614 black and 415 white rhinos. The success of Zimbabwe, a country which encourages rhino hunting, is in contrast to anti-hunting Kenya, where the last male northern white rhino died in 2018. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. <laughs> Next, Wayne Martin has a mission with a catapult that only Paul Childerly can help him accomplish. Yep. 
what could be better than mooching with Wayne Martin? Especially when he's got his mind on game cuisine and when Childerly is sticking his hands in inappropriate places. Anyone who follows Wayne on Instagram will know that catapult forks to field to fork is what he's all about. Today his prime target is a hare. He's never shot one. Paul has a viable population on his ground in Bedfordshire, so Wayne has asked permission to take one for the pot, plus anything else he can take home and cook up. First up, it's gifts and zeroing. Uh, 5.6 grams. Steel? 11 millimetre steel, yeah. Steel. And your new catapult. New catapult. New catapult. I got fed up with him asking me to change his bands. <laughs> after Glen broke yeah. it. So I've got a new catapult here. Wow. Huh? A few fingerprints on it. Which was that one, Wayne? This is the HGH Hedro Goblet Hunter. Hedro Goblet Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. So my design's the goblet. A friend of mine called Matt Redden. His design is the Hedro Hunter. So we combine both of our designs and come up with the HGH the Hedro oh. Goblet Hunter. And I've just got in as well, Eight. just got in stock, luckily for Paul, a matching knife. <laughs> look at that, eh? I know he likes his knives. I do like a knife. Oh. Very smart. Yeah. Very cool. Look at that. <laughs> now we shouldn't underestimate the difficulty of stalking a hare. Paul has some advice. If you walk straight at them, you tend to find that they have, they're sensitive to walking straight up. So if you walk an angle, say there by that tree, you're walking at a bit of an angle so that you, they realise you're going to miss them yeah. and turn and shoot. Um, so walk as almost as if you haven't seen them. Act yes. as if you haven't seen them. If you haven't seen them, don't look at them direct. It's a, it's a, don't look at <laughs> me, don't laugh at me. This is a, this it's, a bit like, it's a bit like crows and things like that, it isn't it? Yeah. If you, if you exactly. address them, yeah. same as if something's sat up yeah. in a tree, if you look up at it, it sees your face. Yeah. yeah. But if you're like looking there, look inside. So David, don't don't look too hard for the camera. <laughs> oh my god! Are they camera shy too? <laughs> <laughs> to help out, Paul has got the Hick Falcon Thermal Spotter, and Wayne has an older model, the Owl. At first glance, we have a receding hairline. We're a bit thin on top, so we head to the trees. Well done. Thank you. That's the first chance I'd get a clear, clear headshot through to him. His first shot strikes home and it's one for one. Well, I have to send another shot up to get him out. But, yeah, see right at the base of the ear. You can feel his skull. It's crushed, cracked to pieces. I'm not sure if it penetrated or not. I think it may have done. Mm. But yeah. Oh, look at that, I'm feeling it and I'm thinking that's going to eat well. Really? Yeah, it's like sort of three quarter grown. It's got a good bit of meat on it. Male or female? In good condition. Oh, young male, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. David can have the sweet breads. <laughs> ain't got any yet. <laughs> Once he has recovered from squirrel buck fever, it's on to the next and much taller conifers. That's it. It's stuck on a blooming branch. There he is, there he is. <laughs> nearly had him. <sighs> Once again, guided in by Paul, who nearly gets a heat source in the face, Wayne hits the target. That is a big squirrel. That is a big squirrel. Another male. Oh, they're lovely. All the colours in them. Yeah. He's grey, wasn't he? Yeah. Super grey. Nearly, nearly. Two for the pot. He's fully grown, just not fully matured yet. But yeah, some good meat on him too. Really good meat. Good size, isn't he? Saffet squirrel, is it? Yeah. <laughs> squirrel stew. Squirrel stew. 
spoiled stew. stew. Yeah. How many spoils do you need for a stew? Well, I put 13 in the last one. It was 13? too much. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 13. It was meat infested, and that was a bit, bit too much to be honest. So I think half a dozen squirrels for a family of four, and uh, you're laughing really. Six to eight squirrels, and that's obviously the legs, the back strap or the centre of the back, and the front legs, and then Can the rest. Show me a picture of it jointed, please. Yeah. Of what you actually would put in the stew. Yeah, yeah. Do you call them haunches? I call them back legs. <laughs> <laughs> back legs, front legs, and back. And then obviously the uh, neck and ribs goes to the ferrets and the offcuts of the skin around the side. Nothing goes to waste. Wow. And tail, toothpick? Yeah, my daughter likes keeping the tail, but I won't let her have them just in case. It's going to let dad grab the tail. No. <laughs> she didn't want to go and stick it in her sister's face or something. <laughs> <laughs> How far was that shot? Um, oh, 15, 18 yards, something like that, I think. Mm. It's good. No, maybe more. I mean, to be honest, with the angle, right? Maybe 20 yards. Yeah. Okay, what's the one to get? Yeah. It was more the angle than, than how far away we were from the tree, you know? The yeah. tree's quite high. Um, it, it's awkward, always awkward shooting upwards. Because yeah. although, like we've explained before, you know, the mm. distance wise that way is different to distance wise that way. So it's 20, it could be 20 yards that way, but it's not 20 yards that way. So you're sort of aiming straight at it, virtually straight up, you know? And I'm very happy with that. Very happy. And here is a shot of Wayne's jointed squirrels, plus a pheasant, which gives the game away a bit, but this is how it ends up on his table. Yeah, <laughs> doing well today, aren't we? Right on the back of the neck. He was just walking away from us. So I just got onto the, uh, just got onto it, and then. Uh... Sorry, it was too quick. No, no, no. Oh. Got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Is that the only pheasant you got on the place? This is the last pheasant in Bedfordshire. <laughs> <laughs> cockbird. He went for the right one there. Was a cut of three cocks and a, and a cut of three hens, and he went for an old cockbird, which is perfect. Next shot, dead yep. spot. Yep. I got some good, good footage of it. On Have the, you? On the, on the, on the thermal. thermal? Oh, excellent. Until the, till the cameraman walked in the way. <laughs> oh, are you joking? <laughs> Did you get the shot or not? Yeah. We're going to have a feast, Wayne. I know. Well, the, I'm more happy with the fact that's three for three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, good tune. That was, to be honest, that went, you went straight into natural mode on that one. Yeah. You explained. Oh, yeah. No problem. Hunter man. Bam. <laughs> straight down. Yeah, really pleased. Really pleased. This is all well and good, but what about that hair? Paul takes us to another part of the estate to let us roam through a wood. Wayne reckons the hares are seeking cover and not in the open fields. Shot. Yeah, he's down, but he's not. We're getting home, and get him out. Shut up. Leave it out. If he has your hands. Well, he does, doesn't he? You might have to get this coat off bolt. <laughs> oh my god. Get in there, boys. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's a, squirrel. it's a squirrel, not a snake. <laughs> The, these things are lethal though, absolutely lethal. You, you, you're talking like, if it, you bite through tendons, everything. Yeah, but it, it, it must be the same as the old boy do these snakes. Basically, get there, get on his tail, and he's only going to have a pull away from you, and then just... They've turned around before, people that have grabbed them behind, they'll turn around and have you. 
Have you got to keep that right tension? And you slide up behind him. <laughs> Tash him like the old viper. Could you go and leave in that one, isn't it? Yeah. That'll hurt a bit, I suppose. God, oh, mate, honestly, they're, they're evil. Well, you think they, they, they bite through acorns, they bite through nuts. I know. Not through mine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that will go straight through your fingers, straight through your tendon. Look at the bone. Yeah. Got sharp in the old hands. <laughs> <laughs> not even like with the hamsters, this is like almost to be honest, squared off. Those are sharp, those are like pointed. Yeah, I think this is a bit of a deformity, really. They're not normally that bad, are no, they? No, they're not quite as pointed as that. No. They're normally like quite flat. They're quite flat and they're grown more together, as like, like the top teeth are. These are very separate and he's probably had a bit of a problem, to be honest. And mind you, that could be where you broke it, isn't it? Back to yeah. Oh my god! Please don't try this at home. Leaving the squirrel charmer and his full complement of digits to his afternoon, Wayne heads off to explore the rest of the wood. Oh. We get chances and we see hares. The closest call is this one under a fallen branch. The thermal once again comes to our aid, but Wayne misses his chance. Back at base, we catch up with Paul and talk catapults and near misses. How do you think you went today then, Wayne? Are you happy with the, uh, happy yeah. With the shooting? Yeah, really pleased with the shooting. Um, let's say the first three, we were three for three. I missed a couple of squirrels towards the end. They were sort of longer range shots. Um, so, you know, you can't hit everything with a catapult. That's just the way it is. Uh, but yeah, all in all, very happy, very happy. Trying to get on the hair was really difficult. Uh, there was none, none we could find in the fields. We uh, searched through the wood with the thermal, came across a few, but nothing would sit, nothing would sit still. Um, we got in on one. I put the shot slightly high. Um, I think you'll probably be able to see that. Just a little bit, which is a bit come disappointing. On, you were desperate to come on. What? Explain why it's high. Do I need to explain why it's yeah, high? Yeah, you do. All right, it's your measurements. David told me about, he could see it better than I could through the camera. Yeah. So he said two inches underneath the bow of this broken branch that was there. And my shot went two inches underneath. Your two inches, not David. My two inches, not David's. And when we watched back on the camera, it's like, David, that's more like four or six inches. You, know, you think a, hair, a hair's eye is probably about an inch. There's about six eyes up to where the bottom of the branch is. So I think my shot was right. I think it was David's measurements that were off. But it was still a miss. A miss was a miss. <laughs> but no, very happy. Very happy. It's been a good day. Thanks, gentlemen. That's been very good. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, mate. Good to see you again. And you, yeah. To buy one of Wayne's catapult range, go to catishack.co.uk and for more information about his Jack Pike clothing, go to jackpike.co.uk. Thanks, Wayne, and the bravest man I know, Paul. Next, are you feeling festive? All right, it was a rhetorical question. What do you buy the shooter in your life? Gun shop owner Ian Hodge is the closest thing we could find to Father Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Christmas again. <laughs> Who would believe it? <laughs> right, we've got the uh, the Ian Hodge Field Sports Christmas stocking. What, what, have you, what have you got for us this week? So we've got Molly and Maisie helping. Right, so what we start off with, always popular this time of year, is the ladies' shooting socks. So we got the pink, but you know, any colours available for um, 16 95 from Jack Pike. We sell tons of these, lovely stuff. Here we are, Browning and Beretta, so we don't upset anybody. One of each in camouflage. Just in case you are really ugly or got something to do, you can, uh, you've got a face mask, which then folds up out of the way. So more product for your pound. Right, so then, more practical than uh, really gift, multi-catch mouse trap. Catches them alive. So uh, yeah, you do, you do them bit, doing your bit, clearing out the mice. But if you do let them go, let them go further away so they don't come back in again. But, um, Acme duck core which um, if there's a shortage of pheasants use this and you'll have plenty of ducks this year. And for the pheasants that aren't out there but you might shoot 
we've got the uh, Jack Pike foldable game carrier, which is actually a really good bit of kit. Fits in your pocket, folds out, and you can carry some birds pretty easily. That one is $10.95, so that is real stocking filler, even in this day and age. If you do really love the person you're giving your present to, yeah, the Howard Light electronic earmuffs at $59.95. Really popular. And end of the day, really, if it protects your hearing, you know, what price can you put on that? And they're electronic, so you can hear what... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuts out the loud bang, but you can have a conversation quite normally. <laughs> and ho, ho, ho. Happy Christmas. <laughs>